The 1989 Chicago Motor Show will go down in history as one of the most significant automotive events in this city and the place where many of today's collector's cars were presented. The late 80s and early 90s were a time of significant expansion of the Japanese car industry, with models like the Mazda Miata rejuvenating and redefining the perfect affordable open-top sports car concept. On the other end of the spectrum, Lexus and Infiniti burst on the scene, offering US buyers a fresh take on the luxury car concept and successfully challenging the likes of Mercedes, Jaguar, and Cadillac. All of those cars created headlines and turned the attention of the global audience towards the brand names from Japan. But on the 9th of February, 1990, Honda did more than just create a buzz. When the gates of the show center opened, the audience and press saw something so advanced, cool, and dynamic that the news about the new Honda echoed like an explosion. And just like that, the sports car world was on high alert. By the late 80s, Japanese car companies were established as a global force, especially active in the sports car segment. Models like the Datsun 240Z in the early 70s revolutionized the affordable coupe class. Toyota Supra offered smooth six-cylinder power and GT cruising capabilities, and back home, Skylines delivered turbocharged performance and insane handling thanks to capable all-wheel drive systems. However, no Japanese manufacturer dared to attack the upper echelon European brands, companies like Ferrari or Porsche. The exotic nature of those cars, advanced technical solutions, innovative materials, and elegant designs was considered too much for primarily economy-oriented Japanese brands. But on the 9th of February, 1989, those prejudices vanished in thin air. Honda presented a future sports car prototype which immediately made Ferrari and Porsche obsolete and outdated. On that cold and windy morning, the automotive public was offered the first glimpse of Honda's most dedicated project, the Acura NSX concept a low, wide, mid-engine tour de force with pop-up headlights and the wedge shape deliberately painted bright red. The sports car prototype was presented under Acura's name, Honda's luxury division, established just a few years before. Despite the fact that Honda worked on this project for a while and spy shots and magazines teased the public, the audience was genuinely stunned, not just by the advanced technology, but also by the sheer beauty of the design and the elegant yet dynamic stance of the car. But before we talk about the NSX, its performance and its success, we should explain how it came to be and tell you the story about its development, almost as interesting as its market life. The official beginning of the NSX saga was in 1984, when Honda started working on experimental chassis designs, drivetrain layouts, and innovative forms. Suddenly, the idea of a mid-engine sports car appeared, and Honda knew that its high-revving engines could produce sufficient power and could make a compelling case if put in a lightweight chassis. At the same time, Honda had already beaten the Europeans on the racetrack, and its legendary F1 program had resulted in six championship titles. The engineers and management agreed it was time to do the same on the street. The first significant and somewhat cheeky move was contracting Peter Frina to create a concept car called HPX powered by a 2-liter V6 engine. By making that show car, Honda announced its aspirations and established the starting point for further development. Right from the start, engineers decided that the new sports car would have a mid-mounted engine with a lightweight chassis, V6 power, and a wedge shape. However, management established a few additional requirements that needed to be achieved. First, the car needed to outperform and outhandle any Porsche or Ferrari, and second, be perfectly usable and dependable like all Hondas are. Although it sounds contradictory, it made perfect sense since Honda wanted to show that sports cars shouldn't be a pain to own and use and that dependability wasn't only reserved for economy cars. In order to achieve all this, Honda designed the world's first all-aluminum monocoque chassis, which was equally light and robust. But the final touch on the chassis development was provided by legendary Ayrton Senna, who, at the time, was driving for McLaren Honda in Formula One. Senna instructed the engineers and helped make the chassis even more rigid. Honda invested a lot of time and resources into making the chassis perfect and even used computers in the process, which was a big deal in the mid-80s. Interestingly, the engine proved to be a more challenging choice. The HPX had a 2-liter V6 engine, but everybody knew it wasn't enough to achieve the desired performance. So, 
The first prototypes had a 3-liter V6 from Acura, which delivered 250 horsepower, quite the power for the late 80s standards, but the NSX needed more. Engine engineers made a 3-liter V6 with twin camshafts per bank to achieve another first in the world. They installed the famous VTEC variable valve system, which resulted in 270 horsepower, and even more importantly, an astonishing 8300 RPM redline. The engine had titanium connecting rods and numerous improvements since Honda's management demanded exceptional dependability and performance. The engine was transversely mounted and connected to a 5-speed manual transmission, making it a tight fit in an aluminum chassis. The final pieces of the puzzle were interior and exterior design, and Pinafrina was chosen to enhance further the form presented on HPX and deliver the final look. Interestingly, the creation of NSX was the work of Japanese industrial designer Ken Okiyama, who is working for Pin and Frina at the moment. Okiyama's lines were made one of the best-looking Honda models of all time and recognizable even to non-car guys. With a cab-forward design and generous glass areas, the NSX had excellent visibility and a comfortable interior, although it was strictly a two-seater. The driver-oriented and well-appointed interior was said to be inspired by the F-16 fighter jet, with all controls within the driver's reach. So it is no wonder that the pre-production Acura NSX caused such a sensation on that winter morning in Chicago in 1989. For the first time in history, Ferrari had a proper competitor and it was from Japan. Suddenly, the Porsche 911 with its rear engine and ill handling became so outdated and the Chevrolet Corvette with a single camshaft, small block V8 seemed prehistoric. The automotive public was eager to know more about Honda's sensation, and the company announced that the car would be on sale in November 1990 under the Acura name. The Acura NSX debuted as a 1991 model and immediately received praise from the motoring press for its long list of qualities. We can call it overachievement on four wheels, and it wouldn't be exaggerating. The Acura NSX had 270 horsepower and 210 pound-feet of torque which helped launch the new sports car to 5.5 seconds, 0 to 60 miles per hour, and a top 163 miles per hour, a few miles per hour less than Honda's requirement. However, the car weighed just 3,000 pounds and had incredible handling and lateral grip. It also had almost ideal weight distribution and superb aerodynamics with a drag coefficient of just 0.32 CW. Interestingly, the first NXX models didn't come with power steering since the car didn't need it. You could turn the wheel in any condition quickly. However, despite all those numbers being equal to or better than the comparable Ferrari or Porsche, the best thing was the three-year, 36,000 miles limited factory warranty, which Italians could only dream of. After countless hours of testing and refining, the NSX was the epitome of quality and dependability in a class where those qualities were almost non-existent, like all Honda models before or since. Such technological excellence came at a significant price, and in 1991, Acura NSX cost $62,000. However, even though the price was very significant, there was a two-year waiting list for this model, and people gladly paid over the sticker price for the privilege of owning and enjoying one of the best sports cars ever produced. At the same time, the slower and less dependable Ferrari 348 was a whopping $90,000 new, and the baseline Porsche 911 Carrera was around $64,000. The Lotus Esprit was also considered an NSX competitor, but with notorious unreliability and a price of around $70,000, it was quickly dismissed. The only comparable sports car cheaper than the NSX was the Chevrolet Corvette C4, priced at $33,000, but its fantastic ZR1 version was over $63,000. All things considered, the NSX was unbeatable value for money, and the only cars that could outrun its cost were two or even three times the price. Of course, Acura couldn't fight the exclusivity and heritage of some of its competitors, but nobody could argue that it wasn't memorable. It was produced at a special factory in Japan by some 200 skilled workers who almost hand-built cars with extreme precision. However, the praises were not unanimous and few journalists criticized the NSX. The main point was that in a relentless quest for perfection, Honda forgot to engineer a genuine emotion into the sports car. The NSX possessed almost clinical precision but no excitement, synonymous with its competitors. That could be a reason why, after just a few years on the market, NSX sales numbers experienced a sharp decline. 
but Honda responded by widening the NSX lineup. In 1996, the Targa Top version was introduced, which produced buyers with an open-top driving sensation. Even more interesting, although sold in only Japan, was NSX-R introduced in 1992. It didn't have more power but was significantly lighter with revised suspension and brakes. This model was for hardcore enthusiasts who wanted sharper handling and an almost race car feel for the street. More expensive and limited to RHD spec, it was produced in only 483 examples. In 1997, Honda further developed the NSX by installing an enlarged 3.2-liter V6 engine with 290 horsepower and 225 pound-feet of torque. Once again, NSX stunned magazine testers with 0 to 60 miles per hour time of 4.8 seconds with the help of the now standard 6-speed manual. Automatic was also available, but it reduced the performance since it was a slow and bulky 4-speed box. Besides that, the NSX received many other mechanical upgrades, making it even better and more capable. In Japan, the particular lightweight version was introduced, delivered with special wheels, design details, and a specific name, NSX Type S. Just over 200 cars were made in that spec from 1997 to 2001. The NSX Type S Zero was a step further as a track special model made in only 30 copies. The major redesign of the NSX came in 2002 when the car received a completely new front end with exposed headlights, different front bumper, wheels, and interior options. This was attempted to keep the NSX relevant on the market, although Honda did not approve the mechanics, except for suspension tweaks. In Japan, the revised NSX-R was offered with significant weight reduction, modified brakes and exterior, and slightly increased performance. Even though the NSX was still very competitive, it was clear that the end of this legendary model had come. After withdrawing it from the American market in 2002, Honda kept the NSX for selected markets until 2005 when it finally stopped production after over 18,500 cars were delivered worldwide. About 10,000 of them were sold as Acura NSX in America, Canada, and Hong Kong. Even though the car was discontinued in 2005, NSX remained a favorite basis for racing cars for much longer. In fact, racing was a big part of NSX's narrative since it successfully competed in numerous championships and events, including the 24-hour Le Mans. The NSX, in various racing specs, has been a constant competitor in the Japanese GT and Endurance series for decades, showing how its racing-derived construction and technology are unbeatable. The best thing that came out of NSX's racing endeavors wasn't numerous wins and titles but the ultimate racing-inspired road-going homologation version, the NSX GTR. It had the same 3.2-liter V6, but the rest of the car was completely changed and ready to be raced. With the price of almost $500,000, it was eye-wateringly expensive and only five were actually made. The Honda NSX saga is one of those rare moments in automotive history when the stars align and help talented people create something really extraordinary. Created by motivated engineers, developed by an F1 driver, and produced by the highest standards, the NSX excelled in every aspect. It also showed that a high price tag and legendary name sometimes doesn't mean much when pitted against dedication, precision, and passion. Even though Honda revived the NSX in 2016, it felt like it didn't follow the same principles. We are still waiting for a true successor and another lustworthy Japanese sports car.